Hi everyone, today is Wednesday, May 29, 2019. My name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist here at the National Weather Service and this is a spring snowmelt runoff briefing uh, looking at our snowpack from today compared to other years. And then we'll look at what the rivers are doing and what they will do in the future. So let's take a look. So when you look at snowpack, this is the northern Utah with the UNNs in the Wasatch on May 29, 2019. This is today. And this is the inches of, of water equivalent across the mountains. The darker redder indicates more snow, more water, and that's what you want. And this is as of today. But let's do this. Let's compare this to other years, other big years recently. We'll do 2011 and we'll do 2017 for this view. So let's take a look at this compared to 2011. 2011 is bigger. Let's go back. And then here's today. Here's 2011. So you can see it was bigger then. But what happened in 2011, it stayed cold all through the spring, all the way through June. And the melt didn't have a lot of energy input. And it, it just kind of petered out because of lack of snow with some big volumes of water, but didn't get really high peak flows because it didn't get hot. Now let's look at 2017. 2017 had less snow than we have today, more uh, less than uh, today, but far less than 2011. And this didn't have flooding either. This had just high peak flows because it melted out early. So when you think of snowpack volumes and you think of how what causes flooding, it's really how it comes off is important. So now let me take your attention to Big and Little Cottonwood, and this is by Salt Lake County. This is today, but this is 2010. This is the snowpack back in 2010 on this date. And if you remember, and you go back to this date, what happened in a week by June 5th, 2010, this amount of snowpack produced a flood in uh, the Murray area and all along uh, Little Cottonwood caused all sorts of problems. Because what happened is in late May, it was very wet and very cold. It laid down snow on south facing aspects and low elevation and and then it got hot. And so it melted very fast. It was isothermal because it was a shallow snowpack at those low elevations and south facing. And it all came off at once and the flood was only about three days. But it caused over a million dollars in damage. Now the question is, how does this snowpack compare to this year? So this is 2010 on this date. This is today. You can see, we'll go back. And here's today. It's bigger. So we've got a bigger snowpack. And we've also had a very similar weather pattern in the second half of May. We've uh, added snow, added snow water equivalent to the snowpack. It's on south facing aspects. It's at lower elevation very similar to 2010 and that's why I'm comparing these two years and the question is is it going to get hot and produce a, a short duration minor flood well minor wasn't minor for the people uh, along Little Cottonwood but in a localized area uh, so we'll see so if you look at stream flow this is kinda how it looked so on the axis You've got, on the one side, the feet in the river at this point, the stage of the river, how it goes up and down. The associated flow in, in cubic feet per second, think of a, a basketball as a cubic foot. About, that's about the right dimension. And one basketball going by you every second is one CFS, or cubic foot per second. So the river was flowing at roughly 57 cubic feet per second. And this is in the upper areas of Weber River near the town of Oakley. Um, and then it started to rise and it rose and you'd see it go up and down. Well, anytime it went down, it's because it got cold. And we had an optimum melt scenario in April. It got warm, got cold, it got warm, got cold. And it would stop start this melt process so it couldn't generate a 24 hour melt engine. So the flow stayed manageable. Similar to those kind of uh, shades behind there, that's what it should do or what it is expected to do, the climatology of the river. But now you see, as of today, it's going to get warm. We're going to warm up and we're going to continue to warm all the way through June 6th. And that delay in the melt, what that's done is 
uh, snowpack that we should have melted in the second half of May, we stored, we added to it, now we've brought it into June, where the high in Salt Lake is actually 10 degrees hotter than it, you would expect in May. So now we've moved into the hotter part of the season, the sun's angle is higher in the sky, and we've got all this extra snow at low elevations and south-facing aspects. And what that's going to do, it's going to fuel the rivers up to June 6th, and beyond that at very high levels, dangerous levels, if you're going to get near there. If we look at the Provo, and this is the headwater areas up in the Uinta Mountains near the town of Woodland, above Francis, uh, the blue is the observed, and you can see it had some pretty good melt scenarios, but before it got too far, before it ramped up, it would get cold, it would shut off, it would ramp up, and then it would shut off dramatically in the second half of May. Well, now we're going to exceed bank flow. And that's roughly going to happen around the 2nd of June. And that doesn't mean a whole lot in this area because it's a very wooded area. It's, it's kind of wild. It, it jumps out of its banks. It runs through the forest. It's okay. But we're getting close. And when you look at Little Cottonwood, it has a very similar scenario. We're going to have hotter temperatures. We're going to have, we did have um, an accumulation of snow at low elevation, south-facing aspects. So the feeling is we're going to get close to some pretty, uh, you know, kind of flood-like levels. Nothing dramatic, but some nuisance flooding. And then depending on how hot it gets in the second week of June and how much snow we have left, it could exceed flood stage or flood flow in the case of Little Cottonwood. The point of this briefing really at this time is that you be cognizant of how high these rivers are going to get in the first week of June. Keep your kids away. Use incredibly prudent judgment when you go around here that the water is so cold it will take your breath away. It's moving so fast and so swift that if you fall in, if your pet jumps in, you get swept away quite quickly. And this is for high elevation watersheds. Anything like the Logan, um, with the Weber, the Provo, American Fork, Big and Little Cottonwood, anything off of the UN is all of these waterways are going to be incredibly dangerous. Watch yourself and watch your children especially. So we'll do another one of these uh, about the latter half of the first week of June, maybe the fourth, somewhere in that range, and we'll see where we are. But understand, we're ramping up. The flows are going to be violent. They're going to be cold, and they're going to be raging. And depending where we go from there, if we have bright sunshine and additional heat, they could go higher. So we'll just leave it at that. This is Brian McInerney. I do appreciate taking the time to listen to this, and we'll go from there. Thank you.